Hey everyone, I'm Jeff Teague in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's a beautiful fall day here. How's the weather where you are? Write it down in the comment section. Let's compare notes. A famous hairband once said, come on, feel the noise. We'll get wild, wild, wild. Well, to me, the 2022 Sienna is wild. It's a vehicle you might want to consider, and I'm going to give you some things I think are really special about this one, why you might want to buy an LE. This is the 2022 Sienna LE front wheel drive. You can get it in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. All Siennas starting with 2021 are hybrid only. So your fuel mileage will be combined of about 35 or about 36, depending on how you drive it. You can get it in this LE model. This is the base model, but you'll see how well equipped it is, which makes it a good choice. Those leaves are brilliant, right? We've got XLE you can choose from, XSE, the new Woodland Edition for 2022, Limited, and Platinum. What do you think of the exterior styling? And then what I do is pick it apart, section by section, piece by piece, feature by feature. Let's go. We're gonna do a first look at the interior and you'll see that the LE trim level is the one that's gonna have cloth seats, fabric seats as you would imagine but it's got the same properties and layout as other trim levels that are higher priced, more well-equipped, we'll call it. This one has a bench seat in the middle row, so it's an eight passenger seat. The middle one is removable. Third row back here. This is just a quick look right now. And then we're going to go around, look at the visibility, the windows, that's how far down the side windows go. I like that window cutout right there. It helps with visibility. Nice big windshield up front. And then we've got the most unusual feature ever, this hardtop deck, which you'll find looks a little unusual at first. The versatility, the capabilities, the storage space, pretty incredible. Let's look closer. And then with the storage area here, We've got hooks. You can put, I would say, plastic bag groceries there, duffel bags, things that you want to have suspended but not roll around. And then this nice, deep, deep storage area so you can start stacking up from down below. And of course, these seats go down as well. I would say the front of the vehicle looks sort of like a spaceship, futuristic, right? But it kind of looks like the way exterior styling's going on a lot of manufacturers, Toyota, everything's looking futuristic space-like. You see these aggressive, really cool. Reminds me of something out of Battlestar Galactica. Really cool. All right, let's look underneath here so I can tell you about the 245 net hybrid horsepower here. It has a prop rod from the down to the up. This has a 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine. It works with electric motors in the front and the rear, and it gives you, like I said, 245 net hybrid horsepower, net system horsepower. I find that it's smooth, it accelerates nicely, electronically controlled CVT is the transmission. You really don't feel it shifting all that much and you wouldn't expect that with a CVT from Toyota brand. You'll have to be the judge of that. You do sacrifice a little power versus the previous generation because that was a 3.5 liter V6 engine, right? Go back up. Suspension in the front, independent McPherson, and in the back, double wishbone style, multi-link rear suspension. It corners very smoothly, responsively. I like it, it's a soft feel. You'll, again, have to be the best judge of that. The drive battery is sealed nickel metal hydride. The other choice for Toyota could be lithium ion, but nickel metal hydride responds well to higher temperatures, lower temperatures, so it could be a great choice for this one. Fuel mileage, the fuel tank is 18 gallons. And just looking inside here, we've got the engine, which would be on the passenger side, gasoline, and then the electric motor right here. You always know that there's something hybrid involved when you see orange, like you see right there. Kicking the heck out of those fuel prices with 36 MPG. It's Joker, 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 36 in the city. 36 on the highway, guess what? 36 combined, it's an 18 gallon fuel tank. And just think about it, the fact that Toyota offers an all wheel drive minivan option, that's pretty remarkable because it can help you in climates like Michigan where I'm from, New York where I've lived, 
Denver area, all those places where you might get snow. Maybe where you get heavy rains or mud or gravel or things like that where you might need the power of all four wheels. This is a great option. And then with the all wheel drive, you're still getting 35 miles a gallon. This is a remarkable choice for efficiency and capability. Even the LE model comes with LED headlights, which is a major bonus. Same thing with the daytime running lights. You'll notice in the front, it has that chrome accent, which adds to something you'd see normally in a limited type grade where you get more chrome. So to me, it adds to the luxurious feel and just the vibe or reputation about Sienna. And then you'll see down at that big wide mouth grill, right? We always wondered when Toyota was going wide mouth with the Camry and the Avalon. Well, they've done it with the Sienna. It doesn't look bad though. It's black in color. You will not see fog lights on the LE trim level. Let's take a look at the profile here because you're gonna see it has great styling, great lines. She's beauty and she's grace. She's Miss United States. It also comes with, I'm sorry, I love that movie. I really do want world peace. This one comes with a smart key push button. It has auto unlock on the driver and passenger front doors. You'll see 17 inch silver alloy wheels here. I like the wheel choice. Not too gaudy, not too plain. It's got color keyed side mirror. And then it also comes standard with blind spot monitor, which means you'll also get rear cross traffic alert as well. This vehicle just came in, so it's not entirely clean. It has black roof rails, no moon roof. And then let's just go along the side. And you can see, I like the, how the windows are kind of sloped. It gives that appearance of speed and aerodynamics. What about these tail lights here, you guys? Looks like a fish tail. Or if you've been drinking in college, a whale tail. Gentlemen, start your engines. I want to show you the LED tail lights and LED stoplight. It's in the sun, so it's a little bit trickier to do it. I'm going to try to back up through the shade a little bit. If you watch Stargirl, the shade. Bad guy. Bad, bad villain. So let's just back it up. All right, can you see all that? Not only does it have LED stoplights and taillights, you'll notice right here this LED accent strip underneath the rear spoiler. It'll have that as well. The backup camera's right here. You'll see lighting down here as well. Let's open her up. Sienna in black, hybrid blue. If this had the power liftgate, ooh, someone's been washing their car, me. If it had the power tailgate, you could do it right there with this little square. Now these seats right here, they can be folded down. I'll try to show you how easy it is. These are lighter than the last generation, so they're easier to maneuver. You can either do it this way or you can do it this way. A couple different options for you, but see we open up a lot of room and we get to the temporary spare now. Now we don't want anybody to get a flat tire, but in the rare instance you did get a flat tire, See if I can open this up here. Now we've got our spare tire. How clever is this? Not underneath, not under the seat, but right here in the side, which is space that you wouldn't use anyway. So I like it. Of course, it looks a little bit different than the other wheels, but it's temporary. So forget about looks. We need this for about 50 miles till we can change it and replace it. Holla. As I get in, notice this right here. It's a great place if you've got hip, back, knee problems, or maybe it's just a little bit tougher to get up into a vehicle because of age or whatever condition, then you can get up nice and easily. Here's the lever right here. Down here, pull that square, and that way you can free up a lot of space and you can recline. You've got a middle seat, it's smaller, but this is sort of an in a pinch seat, I call it. Maybe not, you don't wanna sit there for the whole road trip between North Carolina and Arizona to the Grand Canyon. Am I the only one who felt bad for Joe Dirt when his family deserted him at the Grand Canyon? I felt terrible. Just keeping on, keeping on. This middle seat right here is removable and Toyota makes it pretty easy by 
labeling strap number one right here, strap number two. So you just pull this one, pull the second one, and it flips up in this manner right there. Looking in here, nice comfortable seats, plenty of room for driver and for passenger. It has a power driver seat. It does not have a power passenger seat. The drive battery is located underneath the seats, just a little bit back. So that's why you wanna make sure this stays free. You don't wanna cover it with a blanket or a stuffed animal or a pillow because that's how it cools the battery. Now you'll notice these wood grain trim pieces all the way around. This is how you adjust your mirrors, just like that. You turn it toward the driver's side and turn it. Same thing with the passenger side. Windows, this one right here is a window lock, so if you don't want the passengers in any other seating area to be able to open and shut their windows, maybe kids, this is a great thing to do it. My dog tends to sit on this with his paw on the other side, so I close that so that he cannot accidentally roll down the window while we're riding. If your power doors are not working, it's because this is pushed in probably. So you wanna make sure the orange part is showing and then you know that it can work with power. This is the brightness of the dash. This is your trip odometer, automatic high beams, traction control on and off, and of course your fuel door right here. Here's the hood release, holla. I don't know what you'll put here. It's nice and grippy though. The surface is tacky, very tacky. Composite steering wheel. Here's all the buttons and the controls and dials. This is to turn on your cruise, to set it, and then you can up and down your speed that you have set. This is to go through presets. This is AM, FM, Bluetooth, Sirius XM, and then this is your radar cruise control. And what I mean with your radar cruise control is you wanna push that, and then see up top here, it's got three bars. That means it'll keep you a long distance between you and the cars in front of you. Medium distance, just keep pushing it. That's more close distance. It's not tailgating, but it's closer. Just like that. This means that automatic high beams are activated, so they'll work when you have them on. Ready means your vehicle is ready to go. When you're driving your vehicle, if you want the best gas mileage possible, try to keep it away from this mode. This means you're heavily accelerating. Try to keep it down here. You'll keep your foot off the brake or off the gas You'll slowly decelerate, accelerate, to try to keep it in this range. Best fuel economy right here, baby. Whoop! Let's look at these right here. Multi-information display is controlled with this keypad here. So we're gonna go through, this is lane tracing assist that keeps you centered in your lane. Pre-collision system, do we want it off? Or do we want it on? Okay. We want it on. So just keep pushing that button. Blind spot monitor, do we want it off? Or do we want it on? Rear cross traffic alert, same thing. Road sign assist, same thing. Let's hold that down. Notification method, do you want to be notified if you exceed the speed? Or if there's another way, let's back up. Notification level, if you're speeding, and the posted speed says 45. Do you want to be notified if you're going 46, 48, 50? Just set it how you think is appropriate based on your driving style and your comfort level with whether you want to get tickets or not get a ticket. Vehicle settings, let's hold that down. That's the power sliding door. Do you want it on or off? Rear seat reminder, do you want that on or off? It lets you know that you might've left something in the back. Settings, units, language. Do we want English, Espanol, en français? Units, kilometers and miles, holla. And then here's some other things that you might see. We're just gonna scroll down. Each one's a filing cabinet. We're scrolling down, distance to empty, your eco zone. You wanna have it as high as possible for starting. Slow starts from stop slow deceleration, cruising without excessive speed. This is radar, cruise control, and lane departure alert. Radio, trip distance, trip time. This tells you when you're using the gasoline, when you're using the electric motor, and when you're recharging the battery. 
You'll recharge the battery every time you slow down or take your foot off the accelerator pedal. Lane departure alert on. When your lane departure alert is on and your radar cruise controller on, LTA, lane tracing assist is turned on. That means it'll keep you centered in your lane for about eight or nine seconds. Let's look around the flight deck here. Got a USB port. Look at where you can store your keys, your phone, your wallet, a book, anything like that. This is where I might store a phone if I wanted to look at it. Not that I would, but this is where I would do it. Couple cup holders, couple more, holla. By the way, this has 10 different airbags in it. Look at here. What? More charging, two different sources. And then we're gonna look in the back here because backseat passengers can take advantage of a hook for bags or drivers could put their purse along here. And then we've got different charging methods as well. So many different ways to charge. And then down here, what's this good for? War. What is it good for? This is good for something, something. All right, we've got a 12 volt circular port. Maybe you can put something here that might roll around typically. I think it's a great place. You could put a pen down there, I guess. Um, things that might take up space like a purse or a bag. Great idea to put it right there. Right there, baby. All right, I'm gonna show you the multimedia touch screen. This is a nine inch screen. It's beautifully laid out. It looks futuristic and modern. I'm gonna show you how to set the clock for daylight savings time. Somebody gave me a hard time about that. You failed the viewers, Jeff, because you didn't tell us about daylight savings time, how to adjust the clock. Check the owner's manual next time. All right, so here's how we're gonna adjust the clock. We're gonna go to menu, setup, clock, daylight savings time. Is it on or is it off? And this changes it immediately. Okay. So that's how you do that. Pretty easy stuff. If you want to set up your phone, there's no Bluetooth device registered. Would you like to add one? Just push yes. And then on your settings on your phone, you will go ahead and click that you want to pair a phone. So that's how you do that. You can check and change the theme setting. Do I want red accents? Do I want dark? like nighttime view. I like that one. Wi-Fi you can set up. You can set up vehicle customization, valet mode, dealer info. So there are ways to adjust the door locks, the climate, the lights, interesting stuff. Things to research on your own. General, so you can customize the home screen if you wanna add three pieces of information, two or four, let's add four. So I've got audio, eco, phone, and clock. And then when I go to home, watch, those will be right there. There's eco. Again, that's a different way to look at it, but engine, electric, motor, and battery. You can see how you're doing as far as trip over the last 15 minutes in one minute bars. You can see your average speed and time, and ah, oh, there's so much to check out history. You can see how you've been doing in fuel mileage. It's going to be low because I'm sitting here burning fuel as I explain this to you. So audio, turn that down. Source is where you want your music to come from. Bluetooth would be from your phone, Sirius XM. Oops, I don't want that on. Never want that on. Copyright music. Can't have that. Oh, oh, take my breath away. Whoa, 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 whoa. Pop rocks, I love pop rocks. Now, right here, you can just kind of tweak your temperature. You can tweak the fan speed. You can set up rear temperature. You can sync it with the driver where the air comes out. Same thing with passenger. If you want eco to save a little bit on efficiency and energy, you just do that and it's only going to heat and cool the main driver area. This is your back defroster, your front defroster. Auto gets you to the automatic setting that you wanna be at, just like that. Look at that. We truly have different temperatures for all the areas. What? Here are your flashers. Oh my gosh, I saw a flasher. And then you've got smart key, push button start. So it's quiet when it first starts up. So if you push it, without your foot on the brake, 
it's just going to set up the accessories. So you'll be able to listen to music, eat lunch in your car, that kind of stuff. But if you want to drive it, you have to push the brake down and it'll say ready. That indicates, guess what? It's ready to drive. It'll be quiet for about five to 10 seconds because the gasoline does not need to kick in. And then your car is going to cycle. It'll sound like it's on and then it's off and it's on and it's off over a period of several seconds and minutes as it needs it, it uses it, but then it turns it off when it doesn't need it. Up top here, we have a traditional non auto dimming rear view mirror. This is a little, I call it a little spy glass here. So you can see the people and interact with them in the back and they can see you just a little way to communicate. If you want the lights to be on when the door is open, put it on door. That's always on, always off. I like door. Here's the light. It's not LED, just so you know. These open up the doors on the side. This is your SOS, that's the safety connect button. It can help you if you're in an accident or if your vehicle gets stolen. Slide, baby, slide. Oh, we're blocking the sun, holla. If you wanna to get to the back seating area, you just use this lever to slide it forward. You can tip it like a cow, and then you can just kind of hop right in like I'm doing. Got cup holders here. The air vents are up here, so they go down. And then we've got different seating. This is the middle seat belt that comes down, clips into that spot there, and then it clips in over. So it forms a lap belt and a shoulder belt at the same time. You can see straps where you can put the seats reclined or where you can put them forward. I think this is interesting how this has two, that has one. It's interesting to me. And then look over here, this is great. USB ports for the back row, super important. The seats are comfortable and you can make more or less legroom depending on what you do with the second row seating. Like right here, we've got a big amount of space. So that would be good. Sometimes people just like to like, especially kids like to sit in the third row to have their own private space. You don't need all this room. So you can adjust accordingly to give more or less room for both rows. <laughs> Here's the window sticker so we can learn more. Sienna LE, this is made in Princeton, Indiana. You'll see Highlanders made here as well. Eight passenger, super white, has the gray interior. Really good safety ratings. Then we've got fuel mileage right here. 36, baby, woo! Okay, this has standard features and we're gonna look at those right here. Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. Has Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, Amazon Alexa, six USB charge ports and a USB media port. That's amazing. Six speakers are standard in this one here. Okay. Here's the price. If you get the all-wheel drive, it goes up about $2,000 starting price. The roof rails are extra. So is this temporary spare tire. Could be worth it to you to get that. We're gonna get it delivered from Princeton, Indiana, all over the US with that delivery processing and handling fee. That's what that is. And then each vehicle will have no options, some options or a lot of options right here. Toyo Guard Platinum. It has paint protection on the hood and the door, carpet mats and the phone and cable charging package that gives you wires and cords so you can plug in and charge. 37.7 here at Fred Anderson. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching. What do you think of the Sienna? Do you like the Sienna Hybrid? What trim level is the best one for you? Do you own one already? And did this video help you learn something about your vehicle that you might not have known before? It can apply to all trim levels because most of this is standard equipment and then just keeps working up from that point. So thanks everyone so much for watching. If you want to follow along on my channel, hit subscribe and the notification bell. And then Instagram, I'm on Toyota Jeff one at Toyota Jeff one. And then my sister channel where I look at not just Toyotas, but all other brands that's auto Jeff reviews. And you'll find Instagram at auto Jeff reviews. Thanks everybody so much. You're great. I love you all. Peace. See you next time.